Hey, I'm Jacqueline and welcome to In The Know. This is our weekly video show designed to keep you up to date on the most exciting innovations across the QuickBooks online ecosystem. Today, we're diving into the world of role-based access control. Last year, we introduced role-based access and custom controls for QuickBooks Online Accountant so that you can manage your team members' access to your books with more confidence. But for clients' books, permission for firm users has been all or nothing. That's about to change. In today's episode, we're excited to share the details of the phase one rollout of role-based access controls for managing access to your clients' books. Phase one includes the ability to assign firm users to predefined roles to a given client's books. And now for the fast facts. Role-based access control is available to firms with QuickBooks Online Accountant. To access it, go to your team tab within QuickBooks Online Accountant. This feature will be available in summer of 2024 to pro advisors in the US. If you find this update interesting or helpful, go ahead and like, comment and subscribe for more. Let me introduce you to Ben Martin, who's the talented product manager behind this exciting update. Hi all, Ben Martin here. I'm a product manager on the QuickBooks uh, accountant team. With that, let's go ahead and hop into QuickBooks and take a look at what it's like to add a new user and then add uh, predefined roles for access to the client's books. Here we are on the team tab and we'll click add new user. And let's be cheeky and add myself as the new user to the firm. The first thing we'll do is assign me uh, an access level to the firm's books. We can select from a predefined role or a custom role that we've added in here previously. Let's select no access to the firm's books. Then we can scroll down and see the new experience for adding access to the client's books. Here we have a list of our clients, and let's say we want to assign uh, me this new user to Craig's Landscaping, and we want to make me a payroll manager for this, this client. We can click in here to see more detail on what's included in the payroll manager role, and uh, into these drop downs to see even more granularity of what's included and excluded. We'll save that. One of the things that's uh, great about this is you're able to actually assign multiple different roles to the same user uh, for different clients. So I can be a payroll manager for Craig's and in Bonnie's company, I can be, uh, let's say I'm a very versatile employee of the firm and let's make me a bill payer as well. And if you want to select uh, multiple companies or multiple clients to assign access to, you can easily select which ones or search for them here, even select all there and then edit that access. And let's make me a, say, bill payer for all of those. Great, and that's updated and reflected here. Next, we'll send the invitation and that invitation has been sent. If there's any need to, you can resend that invitation easily here. You can see that Ben Martin's been added to the team. In addition to assigning roles when creating a new client or a new user, you can also edit existing users and change their access to existing firms. We're very excited about this change and the ability that it will give firms to delegate responsibilities in clients' books and reduce risk for the firm. Ben, thank you so much for sharing all of these exciting updates and for your team's hard work on role-based access control for clients' books. Let's take it now to good friends and pro advisors, Nio Carter Gray and Dan Luthi. Dan, Nio, welcome. Thank you so much for being here to discuss role-based access control for your clients' books. Dan was excited about this. He has been gunning for it. I didn't even know it was a thing until Dan brought it up. But I know Dan, the man here, has had an integral role in making sure this happened. So Dan, tell us all about this new feature because you're awesome. Well, I will say, Nio and I actually started a conversation with Intuit like six years ago 
regarding this because it was something that really we felt as a whole and our as a community felt that there needed to be changes on better controls for not only firm users but also for the client users that we have and the biggest thing about controls is is setting it up to where you can limit specific access that people have to so that you can make sure that personalized information from the firm or from the clients don't get out to the wrong people. And so that's one of the things that I'm the most excited about and that I've been really actually lucky to participate with Intuit on is, is helping to structure some of these role situations so that we can make sure that access and data and information is being secured, not only in your firm, um, but also for our customers and the customer experience that they're gonna have. So I'm really, really excited about this because I think it's going to level up the user experience that customers have with QuickBooks, but also it's just gonna change the way that they interact with it and who they give access to information instead of a client have to be the centralized person that does everything in their business. So Dan, for folks who possibly have smaller firms or their firms are growing, how does this functionality enable them to mitigate risk? Ooh, really good question. So I think we'll, we can use our firm as an example of this, even though we're a little bit bigger, but I think there, it's the, the example is really good from that same context anyways. Um, so consider this from the position you have someone who does payroll in your organization for all of your clients. The goal with this now and what functions will be available is you're actually going to be able to limit what that payroll person sees and has the ability to connect and touch within any of your client's QuickBooks files. And so that gives you the ability to start now controlling the potential opportunity of mistakes happening by someone else. It's going to help you to be able to also make sure that people are really focused on their job and what they're doing and the impacts with it. But also it helps the client to feel more confident that if they have a payroll person and a bank rec person and an accountant and a controller, or if it's just two people in a firm, they know who's touching what and when. And it's going to show them much more visualization into that context. And so from a from a, just a compliance standpoint, huge win for accountants, 100% from that perspective. Um, also just from a visibility standpoint, it's gonna make that client just feel so much more confident that people aren't just changing things at free will and whenever they want within their books because you're actually now controlling access to what people see and touch. So same as Dan, it is really a way to avoid that malfeasance, right? I am all about cybersecurity and I am a big, big fan of limiting access to things that people don't need. Um, and being able, even though we're a smaller firm, we're, we're four versus Dan's 30, I still have people uh, in the firm who don't necessarily need full access to our clients books and the same I'm teaching my clients that if you're inviting someone to your uh, your books do they really need access to all of the things I'm teaching them that you know you can assign roles in your firm based off of what that person is doing your accounts payable clerk does not need access to payroll why does she need to be able to go in and look at how much her coworkers are making, right? Um, and so it just opens up those larger conversations for us to be able to really uh, help our clients understand how things happen with cybersecurity, how to limit access to data um, so that they can sleep a little bit better at night. Because we know things like this get sensationalized via social media and the news, and it does worry and concern our clients. And so this is a way to, for me to help them kind of ease into things and not be as stressed about it. Uh, and they know that they're doing their part in order to limit the amount of access and data that people have and need in order to perform the functions uh, in their businesses as well as in mine. Now you bring up a really good point about how explaining to your clients what roles their team members should have or what roles they can expect your team to have can lead to a much larger conversation about who's doing what. Dan, I'd love your point of view on how this new feature and functionality might enable further advisory conversations with your clients as you communicate it to them. Yeah, definitely. I think I love that Nio hit on the nail on the head when it came to presentation for our clients on what's happening within the market or what's happening just in the world. Um, security is becoming so much more important to them. And so having the ability to share and walk a client through how they can change 
the type of visualization and the type of data that their team can have access to gives them peace of mind. The nice part about it too is that it actually gives you the ability to talk to clients about controls. It gives you the ability to be able to really coach them and help them understand how limiting certain people's access to things actually can give them more control about the, within their organization, but also gives them more control over what their team potentially can do. And so instead of them having to be the central point for literally everything, they can actually start treating their company as a company where it's multiple people interacting with it by limiting what access people have and what people can do. Um, I think it's also important to note with this as well too is the QuickBooks product is changing really heavily. You know, six years ago when we first originally started some of this conversation, it was a very different product than it is today. Yeah. Payroll is dramatically different. We really only have three SKUs now instead of the 77 SKUs <laughs> that we had previously. You know, AP is now a feature set. Loans and AR are becoming much more pre you know prevalent within core product. And so <clears throat> going into the future, the user experience is going to be dramatically different. And so this is setting up the opportunity for people to have one place or have a more centralized place for them to interact as an organization, which I think is just gonna be huge from a, from a user experience from that perspective. Well, Dan and Nilo, thank you so much for sharing these powerful insights and stories on role-based access control now for clients books and how this will help you help them um, up-level their overall processes and systems. So we'll move into one quick question with the theme of today's episode being all about customization, personalization, and control. Very serious question. Nayo, how do you customize your Froyo? Oh, my Froyo. <laughs> I love it. Uh, typically, it is a Ben & Jerry's Cherry Garcia Froyo. My wife eats those, <laughs> and I respect that. I 100% <laughs> respect it. But uh, my go-to, I'm, I'm buttoning in on this one. My go-to is usually something cheesecake-based, honestly, when it comes to my Froyo. So bring that in. I love raspberries. I love fresh fruit. Dump some of that on there. And then you cannot forget to put in your like cheesecake crumble pieces and then either <laughs> like graham cracker across the top of it or crushed up waffle cone. Like that is, that's money. Well, I'm out. I need to go get my Froyo. But Dan and Nayo, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing all of your thoughts and insights. So amazing to have you all here. We'll catch you next time. See you guys. And thank you for watching this episode. I'm Jacqueline, the host of In The Know and leader of Pro Advisor training and certification. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a single episode. I mean, heck, why not drop your favorite Froyo topping into the comments? I know what mine is. It's brownies and cookie dough. I usually can't decide, so I do both. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>